All right, so this is a Holly peach. I leave these on so that I know I have a few trees that I didn't leave them on or they got blown away and then I don't know what they are. It's important to know when you're pruning, which is the topic today, what you're pruning. So two different categories, stone fruit, that includes anything that has a large single seed in the middle, like plums, apricots, peaches. They have, or you are striving for the shape of an upside down umbrella or bowl. So you do not want a central leader. This would be the central leader. Notice that that's been cut and a shape bowl shape is created. We want a lot of airflow in the middle. We do not want branches like these pointing inward towards the middle where the central leader would have been. We don't want more than one, maybe two upside down umbrellas. Like here, I'm still experimenting with possibly creating a cup shape out of these. But ultimately, I will probably in another year or two get rid of those if they don't pan out. But you can see we've got a good shape going already from last year's pruning. But a lot has happened. For example, this one, my goodness, that's all just this year's growth. Um, and notice it's going inward. That's not what we want. So I'm gonna prop this up and hopefully you guys can observe some of the cuts I'm making. Uh, let's see, one of the things I do, where did I put it? Mm, did I leave it? There it is. Okay, another piece of advice. Don't put your tools down in the grass. <laughs> you might step on them. That wouldn't feel good. Now, you don't have to have brand new pruners. Uh, you just have to have good ones. And if they're a bit rusty or have aren't sharp anymore, I sharpen mine using, using a stone that I can't find. Another thing I've lost. I'll bet you I put it down somewhere else. Anyway, I sharpen mine using a stone and then I use either alcohol or in this case I have hydrogen peroxide to wipe down the blades. So notice the silver, that is the sharpened edge. So even though the rest is a bit rusty, the edge is nice and crisp and sharp and it's been disinfected. All right, so let's see if I can do this one-handed. So for example, since I want a nice bowl shape, I can see right off the bat that this guy is coming in to my bowl shape. So he gets a complete ax. Take him out right at the bottom, okay? This I'd like to develop into another part of the upside down bowl. Uh, and it's doing real well, but we can't have anything growing inward. So we're going to make sure it puts all its strength into lengthening itself and growing at the bottom and outward. This also needs to go. So now it's going to take this and grow outward couple more examples. This branch is perfectly fine. It is inside the bowl format. However, a lot of these guys are going to end up going inward or crossing over another branch. That's not what we want. So next part, and there's plenty more I need to do, but um, the next part you want to watch out for is when you've got one that reaches up, 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 up. You wanna resist the temptation to leave uh, branches just because you want more fruit. Because contrary to that instinct, you will get more fruit if you prune hard. 
So here's a good example of, we wanna widen the bowl as much as possible. Let me step back so you can see it better. So you can see the bowl right here. And I don't want anything growing inward. So I'm gonna be taking care of all of that. So when I've got a branch like this one here, this is the one we were looking at. It's going really high and I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna have lots of fruit, but what's gonna happen is it's going to start crossing over with other branches. It's gonna compete for sunlight and that is going to give you fewer fruit. So what I'm going to do is take a look at its current shape. I gotta be careful not to step on my garlic or the horrendous ant pile, which I'm not even sure if it's active. Uh, okay, so we're talking about this guy. So looking at the shape of these secondary branches, I see that this one will have to get clipped because it's going to eventually cross with this one. So let's get rid of this one. This one is going in the direction that I'd like the branch to go in outward but still upwards so as scary as it seems for the first time pruner i'm getting rid of these two feet just going to cut right there now this branch is going to grow outward and upward so if we have too many of these secondary branches growing upward we're going to have to make some decisions about which ones are the strongest, which ones are in the position that we want to be in. This is going inward. This is eventually going to cross over these guys. Nope. This guy is definitely on its way. It's only a few inches away from this guy. He's going out. <clears throat> this guy's fine, except for this. Let me get rid of that. And I'd like it to continue growing out this way. So I'm going to encourage that by getting rid of the other option. Again, anything that's going inward or threatening to cross over, here we've got a crossover situation that's about to happen. So here's another tip. So let me stand back. Oops. Yep. Almost stepped in my garlic. So let's talk about these two. We've got this one that I was working on and this one. You can see they're kind of competing for airspace and they're parallel, which means since south is that way, this one, ignoring the fact that there's a bunch of other stuff already, this one would shade out this one. So we would ideally like, since I like the direction that this one is taking as far as I come from this side I can see that this one this is the one I'm talking about is going out and it's going up but it's going up so steeply that I know it will cross and have problems later on here so that's why we trimmed this to go outward what we want to do now is evaluate if any of these branches are going to compete with that or if we want to reduce. Notice how many. We've got a ton of branches on this one. So I'm going to reduce this one going straight up. That one's okay. I'm going to take this guy out. That's one less. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this entire this one out because it's just crowded in here. We want fewer branches. We don't want them crowded together. Look at that. That's much nicer already. I'm going to take these guys out because they're just going to end up becoming an issue. This it's a little hard to tell. So this one here is problematic because of this one. So we have to make some decisions between these two. Let me move around a little bit so you can kind of see how they're attached. I've got this one coming out and I've got this one coming out. Now this one's much more developed. It has a lot more fruit potential for this year, but 
keep in mind, we don't want to worry about this year. We want to worry about long-term, uh, healthy growth habits. I think our best bet is to encourage this guy to go further out, and that's what this one is doing. And so I'm going to get rid of this one. That reduces the volume, thins it out, and discourages it from developing in the direction where it's going to create problems for, hold on, it's hard to do with one hand. <laughs> and you want to not mutilate it the way I'm doing here. See, that's, that's a bit, that's pretty bad cut right there because I had one hand. So I can come back in here and try and neaten that up. Uh, it still doesn't want to do it. So here's an obvious one. Here's an obvious one. All right, so it's looking better already. Again, some of these obvious ones, and I'll speed it up as I go through anything going inward. or threatening to cross over. Now, here's a good example. You see this guy here? He is gonna do nothing but come up here and get in the way. So uh, uh, what I, I'm gonna do, since there are other branches that are much more mature out here, I'm gonna get rid of him. And uh, here we've got a crossover situation. We've got Uh, so, we've got this guy who is active, so you can see there's something going on here, and he is going in the correct direction, so I, I'm going to leave him for now, but I'm going to trim off anything here, and I want to get rid of this guy. Um, so again, I'm not sure if we're going to keep these branches at this level, it's like a second little umbrella but I'll work them another year or so and see whether it's detrimental to the tree to keep it. This one is right in between these two. Here's where one umbrella is, and here's where the other bowl or umbrella is. So I'm getting rid of what's in between. This, this is part of this lower bowl. Okay, so again, if I want to encourage this guy I step back I want to encourage this guy to go out more out than up always up but more out than up he's doing a good job here but here we're starting to see off the central line very strong shoots going upwards and I'm most concerned about this end one because I don't want these two this one and this one competing for the direction that this tree goes in. Too many cooks in the kitchen, too many leaders, right? So I like the direction that this guy is going in because he's taking this branch. You have to remember, eventually this is all gonna be full of foliage and hopefully at some point peaches. We want to have airflow. So we're going to take this guy out and now we have a clear shot for this guy to come out. This guy's doing okay, he's going away. He's moving, it's hard to see from that angle. He's moving away from this guy as he goes up. This is just gonna be too crowded because he's gonna compete with the next tier up. The next tier up, I usually don't cut too many downward ones, but since we do have the tier below, I don't want there to be so much foliage in this area that it becomes a problem. All right, uh, tune in for the next set. I will do a non-stone fruit tree. That would be your apples, your pears, anything that has multiple seeds. And that has a different structure, a different shape that you're gonna work towards. Um, okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and post the final picture. Let me go ahead and 
do a few more. 